Welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parson, Joe Caulfield, and Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis, and Mark Watson. <laughs> Let's start with headliners. Here's a picture of Conservative leader David Cameron. So, what does CSIP stand for? Is it his favourite TV show, CSI Portsmouth? <laughs> Every week it's the same story, a guy getting kicked to death by sailors. <laughs> is it Cameron's strangely invisible policies? He, he's, he said it... satirically. Yes. <laughs> so yes, it is. Well, that's very wild. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I did something about the news. Yeah. Uh, is it yeah. conceited, Crawl. shallow, inbred prat? <laughs> See, in a, sense, in a sense, he also did something about the news, but he called him a prat at the end. Yes. <laughs> Is it Cameron's sushi included polonium? Yes. <laughs> Tremendously <laughs> tough. Is it um, Cameron slips in poles oh, or something like is that? It, is it or something like it? <laughs> Cameron <laughs> slump in poles? <laughs> Neither of you are Is it correct. conservative slip in poles? You that? go for conservative slip in I reckon, poles? I reckon. The answer is... Conservative slide in oh, polls. Oh, so oh, actually, <laughs> none of you got the correct oh, answer. Oh, I'm off. off. <laughs> <laughs> the answer I was looking for was conservative slide in polls. With the brown bounce in full effects, the government have achieved their highest poll ratings for two years. They be seven point lead over the Tories, further increasing the growing pressure on David Cameron. Who, like me, finds the term the brown bounce to be slightly distasteful? <laughs> As if it's something you achieve by stretching cling film over the toilet in a, as a, an army prank of some description. How, then, how has it gone wrong for Cameron? Because, no, because he's practically invisible. Because Gordon Brown has announced policies exactly the same time as he has every day for the last two weeks. And most of Gordon Brown's policies have been more interesting. Do you see, do you see Brown's thing this week was he said he wanted all government buildings to fly the Union Jack as a message to terrorists? A message that says, <laughs> these buildings are worth bombing. <laughs> As a matter is, why has this man caused a problem for Gordon Brown? He's stolen his iPod. And he's, playing <laughs> it. he's playing it with it. He's playing it with it. I need actual answers to this. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's because of the diplomats. It is because of the Who is he first of all, this man? Oh, this is Putin. It is indeed Putin. Very good. The facts I can do, it's just some of the humour doesn't go as well. The reason that he's been a bother to Brown is that we want this uh, the guy who poisoned... Um, allegedly may poisoned. Have poisoned may have allegedly poisoned. Allegedly Litvinenko. poisoned. Litvinenko. Ligovoy. Uh, Ligovoy, to come yeah. back from uh, Russia, to be extradited from Russia. But why, why would we want him? He's radioactive. You know what I mean. <laughs> See what you like about Litvinenko. He was a brilliant spy, wasn't he? He was a master of disguise. One minute he was a sort of 40-year-old man, next a very old weathered man. <laughs> <laughs> we, we didn't give a shit about Litvinenko, did we? Until no. we found out they'd put polonium in his tea. Oh, that got the British people furious. <laughs> that is no way to treat a cup of tea. <laughs> OK, which other Tory uh, has been in the news this week? Are you suggesting Vladimir Putin is a Tory? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite conservative, <laughs> you have to admit. <laughs> it was Boris. It's Boris, yes, of course it is. I'd like to see Boris Johnson, like, if he's standing for mayor, to just apologise to everybody in advance. <laughs> he just should do his opening speech going, I'd like to apologise to lesbians, Muslims and the deaf. I said, the deaf! <laughs> It would be so great. It would be genuinely so great if he won. Because yeah. you just you just know he'd just rock out. Sorry I'm late. I woke up wearing yeah. flippers in a canoe for yeah. a strawberry. <laughs> what's, what's happened? Peckham has been bombed. Ah, it's rough as arseholes, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he, he would set up a London confusion zone. <laughs> <laughs> Do we like him? Who likes him? Yeah. He's I'd pretty... like him around, but yeah, I wouldn't I really let him be mayor of Trumpton, really. Trump. <laughs> 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 yeah, perhaps one of those kind of mayors who just wears a gold chain at Fates and welcomes He's people in. Not the one in charge of 500 staff and a £4.7 yeah. billion pound budget. He's the sort of person who, like, 200 years ago would have died aged 30 leading a cavalry charge into a volcano. <laughs> Surely syphilis would have got him first. <laughs> 
been making an effort, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. Keeping beautiful old traditions alive with that. He, he, actually, he yeah. actually had to go up to Liverpool, didn't he, to apologise. And then straight afterwards he slagged off Portsmouth and he had to apologise to them. And then he slagged off Papua New Guinea for being a bunch of cannibals. I was looking forward to him going <laughs> over to Papua New Guinea <laughs> to apologise and then them meeting him. That, <laughs> that would have been brilliant, wouldn't it? How funny would it have been if he was on the flight and somebody just put steak seasoning on him whilst he was asleep? <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Papua New Guinea. Let's test the theory, shall we? <laughs> that seems to be. That seems to change with parsley. Uh, <laughs> did you see the reply from the people of Papua New Guinea when he called them cannibals? Yeah. Wasn't to say, "How dare you?" They said, <laughs> "No, they went. They went. How dare you? That hasn't happened for over forty years." <laughs> I love the thing, you know, you remember when he said, "If you vote Tory, it will uh, cause your wife's breast to increase in size," yeah. and it worked. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I should have kept that to myself. Yeah. I don't think it, is anyone that excited by the idea of London Mayor? I don't think I don't think London Mayor's that exciting a position at the moment. I mean, in fifty years' time, when London has to raise itself on hydraulic legs to fight Tokyo for resources, <laughs> we all cling on to Primrose Hill. <laughs> it's going to be an important job. But now, I mean, who cares? Which other blue-blooded public figure heads the headlines this week? There's a Smurf oh. who's on the loose. <laughs> Queenie. Queenie. It is the Queen, yeah. Queenie was fantastic. I thought it was absolutely brilliant, I think. So she's having a picture taken, she's got her tiara on, and this matted costume with, you know, a purple trail of ten feet or something. And what I didn't realise about the Queen is that she's fantastically sarcastic. <coughs> so the, the photographer goes, Will you take your tiara off to make it less dressy? And the Queen goes, Less dressy? What do you think this is? <laughs> oh, well, that's fantastic. So now, every time she says something, I think, oh, she's being sarcastic. <laughs> so when she's there going, oh, you're going to entertain me with native dance. How thrilling. <laughs> What I loved about this story, though, was that the production company have now taken uh, admitted culpability for this. Are the same production company who make faking it? <laughs> <laughs> I think the royals, right? The royals, I think, are so pampered and live in such, such luxury that when they go outside of that, they don't know if they're being shown round a disaster zone or not. <laughs> oh, are you a landmine survivor? No, you're an Olympic swimmer. Well done. <laughs> They don't know the difference between a refugee camp and an Ibis hotel. <laughs> <I'm here there>. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing, it just didn't bother me. It's just the hoo-ha people. Oh, the Queen, I can't believe it. And you think, well... It, it, didn't, it didn't shatter your trust to this? Not stuff. in any way. You know, but it would have been better if they'd have... You know, if you're going to make stuff up, then go crazy. I say. It would be great just to have images of her punching a swan repeatedly. <laughs> I'm the only one that can hit you. <laughs> It has been, you know, just, just in a long line of apology, as if, you know, because television, television, it turns out has been lying to us. I know. All this time. I know. Well, uh, listen to this. I found out this week, Pudsy's eye, nothing wrong with it. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's on different sides. Yeah, Pudsy forgets himself. Do you know this thing about, like, uh, phone-in quizzes and yeah. stuff like that? Oh, it's like, it's like these producers think we're stupid or something. You think, they've just asked you if you think the capital of France is Jack Nicholson. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm waiting for the yeah. cash in the attic scandal to smash. <laughs> where somebody goes, wait a minute, he rang the doorbell, but the woman was already wearing a microphone. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> and then it was a shot over her shoulder, as if there was already a camera yeah. team in the house. <laughs> it's like they knew they were coming. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't find it in the attic, yeah. they found it in the spare room. <laughs> By the way, why was last Sunday, this is not really uh, anything to do with the stories that have gone before, why was last Sunday special? Well, I had a fantastic barbecue. Um, <laughs> OK. <laughs> oh, but that happens in your life all the time. Well, right? Sunday, Sunday is barbecue day, you're right. Well, every Sunday is special because of uh, the Lord. <laughs> I should be honest, Mark. Well, I'm, surprised, I'm surprised it's come up now. <laughs> I would say it was St Swithin's Day. Uh, oh, it's going to yeah. rain for 40 days. 40 more days. Yeah. With good news to the people of Hull. So, uh, 40 more days. Which gives us an excuse to show this piece of footage, by the way, which is recorded uh, in Chesterfield in Derbyshire, uh, which is footage taken, actuality footage. We haven't re edited this in any way, of a heroic police effort during the floods with the full support of the local population. So 
I'm so glad I got that on camera. Wow. Good that, you know, even in the face of that adversity, these people who couldn't get to their house, they get to laugh. <laughs> these are bad times in Hull if you're trying to get your house dry, but they're great times if you're a crime fighter who likes to dress up as a shark, Dara. <laughs> it's not all bad. We've now got two lake districts, <laughs> and Sheffield suddenly has a fishing industry, <laughs> which largely catches DVD players. <laughs> At the end of that round, I'm going to give the points to... Mm. Could go either way, we'll just give it to Frankie, Hugh and Mark, mm. eh? <laughs> the next round is called Between the Lines and features Hugh and Frankie. Oh, okay. Would you please make your way to the press pit? Frankie, this week, you are soccer superstar David Beckham, introducing himself to the many fans of LA Galaxy. <laughs> Hugh will tell us what he really means. I'm glad to have this opportunity to let you know what I'm thinking. <laughs> it's great to have left Real Madrid. <laughs> I hate Poland. I've bought a house in L.A. right by the big Hollywood sign. I'd love to know what it says. <laughs> Brooklyn has settled in well at an American school. He shot someone. <laughs> My wife knows how much I love her. I sent her a text by mistake. surprised to learn that I was wanted by Scientology. I didn't know they had a team. <laughs> Tom Cruise's wife, Katie, is always advising us to hire more staff. She keeps sending me notes saying, get help. <laughs> Very good. Well done to both of them. Now we play a round called Spin the News Bottle. This game involves Mark, Andy, Frankie and Joe. So if you can make your way to the performance area, please. This is where we test our performance stand-up skills. We spin our random news generator, it settles on topic, and anyone can volunteer jokes. The winner is a team with the best stuff. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel for the first topic. That is identity theft. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> Like, the simplest things now you can't do without the threat of identity fraud. Like getting a passport. I went to get a new passport, queued for two hours, got to the front of the queue, and they said, sorry, you can't use this photo, it's not valid. Why? Your face is too big. <laughs> <laughs> this is... A, my face is normal. Right? It's a normal size. with a beaky nose, but I can't stab someone with that. <laughs> Because of terror, there's all these rules now for passport photos. Your face can't be too close to the camera. You can't be smiling too much. You can't have a hat on, gun, all this, right? <laughs> like, like, what do you mean my face is too big? OK, immigration officials, maybe not the brightest people in the world, are they really going to look at your passport and go, yeah, that looks like you, except this man's face is massive! <laughs> <laughs> if this was you, you'd be a bloody giant! <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. And the subject is terror threat. <coughs> Joe Coffin. Uh, I've been given quite a lot of thought to the whole uh, suicide bomber situation. Now, what I'm thinking about particularly is their reward of 72 virgins, because I think they haven't really thought this through. Because what the suicide bomber isn't imagining as a virgin may be very different in reality. <laughs> <laughs> because do you know who's also a virgin? My Auntie Joyce in Dublin. <laughs> She's 67 and lives with 14 cats. <laughs> I don't think that's what they've got in mind. <laughs> but I think that would truly be divine justice. <laughs> You've blown yourself up, you get to heaven, what's your reward? My Auntie Joyce. <laughs> and she's keen. <laughs> she's waited a long time. <laughs> When you've done me, there's 71 of my friends from the church need doing as well. <laughs> You'll have to do Bridget from behind. <laughs> She's on a Zimmer frame now. 
That leaves us with Andy and Frankie. What's the next topic? <laughs> topic is drugs. And Andy's in. <laughs> now, it seems only 27 people in Britain died from taking ecstasy last year, right? 50 people died from swallowing a bee. <laughs> 72 people died attempting DIY in their own home. <laughs> So how come we haven't also got campaigns, bees, don't swallow them, <laughs> and shelves, just say no. <laughs> Andy Parsons. <laughs> Let's see what Frankie has left. Topic is celebrity. Yeah, I've got a bit of an insight into this because I've got to that stage in Scotland where people recognise me but they don't know where from. <laughs> so last week I got followed by two guys who thought that I was the wee bear from Bow Selector. <laughs> Apparently, uh, Catherine Zeta Jones lives in LA but she has bottles of air imported from Wales. <laughs> when I want my house to smell like Wales, I just kick my dog until it farts. <laughs> Pete Doherty, right, does anyone else think that Pete Doherty is quite fat for a heroin addict? <laughs> What's he been cutting his heroin with? A hollandaise sauce. <laughs> Thank you, Royal. Points go to Frankie and Mark there. Come on, to ground. This round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board, six categories. Joe, which category would you like? Sport. Your category is sport. The answer is 250,000. Is that the amount of Iceland dinners the robbers took from Kerry Katona's house? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you think there's a point where they came in? Do you have anything other than drumsticks? <laughs> is, that, is there anything that isn't breaded? <laughs> is it what world ranking is the British tennis number five? <laughs> <laughs> is it how many calories in a Scottish salad? <laughs> is it um, what position did I finish in the 1987 Henley School Sports Day obstacle race because I got stuck in the sack, but it didn't traumatise me at all. I don't even care now. <laughs> <laughs> is it if you phone up British Telecom, which position in the queue are you likely to be? <laughs> <laughs> What percentage of people failed O-level maths? I'm going to ask you to speed towards the correct answer. I, 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 it's sport, isn't it? Is it to do with Beckham? It yeah. is to do with Beckham. Is it how many uh, shirts do the Americans claim that Beckham has sold? That's absolutely right. Well done, Russell. Congratulations. <laughs> The question I was looking for is how many Beckham replica shirts are LA Galaxy already claiming to have sold? He's wearing that the wrong way round. He is. That's, <laughs> that's the first change. <laughs> Does anyone think that Beckham actually knows he's in America? <laughs> I think he just, he just runs after a ball and all he notices is that occasionally it gets warmer. <laughs> I don't think he even knows he's rich. He's like one of those cats that its owner's <laughs> left a fortune to. <laughs> Did you see how they launched themselves in America with that photo shoot? Did anyone see those pictures yeah, yeah, of them? Yeah, yeah. With her... I mean, but for their children, it's sad, isn't it? Because here's Mummy looking like a whore and Daddy like a rent boy. <laughs> I mean, she looks like she has a dump about once every four years. <laughs> it's probably how Beckham can tell that there's a World Cup coming up. <laughs> The thing is, they're, they're always afraid of stalkers and kidnappers, aren't they? And this is like the home of kidnappers. And she would make the perfect kidnap victim, because can you imagine how cheap it would be to start sending her body parts back to the post? <laughs> you could fax them. My granddad said of the, of the Beckhams the other day, it was great, he just stopped in front of the telly and went, she needs a meal and he needs a left foot. Yeah. And just <laughs> one. <laughs> 
Talking of sport, which major event continues this week? Tour oh, that, yeah, yeah. cycling. Tour de France. And uh, do we have any particular link to the Tour of France? <laughs> yes, um, we do. He's sitting next to me now. Indeed he is. Hugh, what did you do yesterday? I cycled the mountain stage, the 15th stage of the Tour de France. <laughs> Look, there that is <laughs> actually Hugh That's me. <laughs> on a bike. It, it was 199 kilometres, and there were five mountains, the smallest of which was just slightly bigger than Snowden. <laughs> <laughs> and it took me 11 hours and 7 minutes. But it was only after about 10 hours and 50 minutes, and this was just to save my pride, that I overtook a French cyclist who had one leg. <laughs> <laughs> practically, were you there just going, I'm, I'll yeah. take him, I'll I'm take him. <laughs> just soon my moment will be here. I've got to get him. <laughs> it's tactical. It's fantastic going downhill, though, when you get to the top and then you have just have 20 kilometres where you don't have to pedal at all. It's Here's fantastic. a question. When did you were make... going downhill the mountain, did you go, wee? <laughs> <laughs> did you, have, did you have the, put the legs out and everything? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you have spokey dokies? I, I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't know Spokey Dokies. <laughs> <laughs> that would just be unnecessarily causing more hassle for you. I should have taken off these Spokey Dokies. <laughs> As they're going, duck, duck, <laughs> really slowly. Exactly. <laughs> on the top of the first hill, the guy I was cycling with, we both stopped for a, a pee, because you need it, you have to have one. You've drunk so much at this point. This is about 80 kilometres in. And uh, three of us were standing in the grate. And then uh, me and my mate got back on our bikes. And uh, Paddy, my mate, turned to me and went, I the guy next to us had the most enormous cock I have ever seen. <laughs> and that kept us going for about another 50. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of interest, and this is a bizarre coincidence. When you were cycling up the mountain, I know it wasn't too yeah. much of a social occasion. Did you meet this man? I don't... Well, I don't know. I wouldn't have recognised him without his helmet on. Who was that man? Uh, that man's my dad. Is he? Did he, he do it? Yeah, he did, yeah. He, he actually had a piss next to your mate. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one start, a, a meeting occurred during this week. Uh, I'll give you Bao Shi Shun. Oh, no. It's the world's tallest man. And it the is. And, the world's and smallest he, he smallest met the, uh, the shortest man in the world, yeah. Well, OK, this is the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, no, 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 it should be pointed just for clarity. Bao Shi Shun, the world's tallest man, seven foot nine. Uh, met a man called He Ping Ping, who is not the world's shortest man, is applying to be the world show, because there are a series of interviews. Uh, <laughs> it's like The Apprentice. We yeah. have to go, how much what? do you really want this? He does look like he's thinking, has anybody got two slices of bread? <laughs> <laughs> it's a fantastic story. Uh, there were some dolphins in Beijing Zoo that had plastic shards deep in their stomachs. And apparently they got his hands in there and he pulled out the plastic shards. You're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah everyone pulled the photo. Yeah. The, um, everyone, they... everyone found out about him and up to this point he'd been living in a cave. A woman saw him on Huge air and cave. just went, yeah, a massive yeah. cave. His legs yeah. were sticking out. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> that's where he lives. But the woman saw it and went, oh my God, that's the man for me. And now he's in love. It's fantastic. Has he got married? He has yeah, got married. Yeah, he got yeah. married. Yeah, too. she's five foot six. This is uh, to himself and the wife. I like the thought that the, when he went down on one knee, it'll have been the first time that she saw his face. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 a real, it's a real fairy tale romance, isn't it? <laughs> a beautiful woman being stolen by an evil giant. People <laughs> 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 uh, in Britain on their honeymoon now and they see this. <laughs> but he could always just put the TV off without getting out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to something from the minibar as well? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That seagull's really annoying me. Is it? Quack. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, ladies and gentlemen, and nothing to do with what was said, I think we really have to give the points out to Frankie, Mark and Hugh. Hey. <laughs> now we come to our final quickfire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you could all make your way to the performance area, please. I will call out ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. The first subject is the worst thing to hear over a tannoy system. Only you can hear me. <laughs> the train to Nottingham will arrive in five minutes, which is a pity because this is Tesco. <laughs> <laughs> Second floor, but you can't get out. <laughs> Welcome to our school sports day. Mark will probably get stuck in a sack. Ha, bloody ha. <laughs> <laughs> Can somebody come to the salami slicer, please? 
If anybody has found a Vix inhaler... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we all know there will be a bomb on the tube, but will it be today? <laughs> The lift doors are closing, leaving you trapped in an airless, windowless coffin, <laughs> hurtling downwards at a hundred miles an hour. <laughs> Would the parents of the child that fell into the tiger enclosure please come to Lost Property to collect her shoes? <laughs> The plane's about to land in Glasgow. Passengers are reminded to set their watches back 25 years. <laughs> the next topic is unlikely lines from the final Harry Potter book. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry, Hermione, I can get rid of it. Chlamydia disappearo. <laughs> Okay, Hermione, said Harry, unbuttoning his zip. I'll show you a really magic wand. <laughs> <laughs> Harry had always thought that he'd meet his death at the hands of Voldemort, so imagine his surprise when the doctors told him that he was HIV positive. <laughs> <laughs> no, that no, there is no post today, said Ron. The owls are on a one-day strike over the <laughs> Midway through the orgy, Ron winked at Harry. This is better than Quidditch, his eyes seemed to say. <laughs> it was a magic mirror that showed the future, and in it, Harry seemed to be a 30-year-old actor appearing in something called The Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Get the snitch, said Harry. I'll tie him down and you can drill through his kneecaps. <laughs> As the old man stood in front of him in his robes, clutching his wand, Harry regretted transferring to Catholic school. <laughs> I'm sorry, Harry. I'm having a baby, and it's yours, said Professor McGonagall. <laughs> <laughs> then Harry says something, Hermione says something, oh, who cares? I'm minted. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, ladies and gentlemen, I'll have to give the points there to Frankie Hugh and Mark. It's the end of the show. This week's winners are Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis, and Mark Watson. <laughs> Commiserations to Andy Parton, Joe Caulfield, and Russell Howard. <laughs> Thank you for watching. See you next week. Good night. More Thursday night comedies to come. The Space Force trapped in a hideous reality TV show with Hyperdrive next. Then curmudgeonly old geezers Jack and Victor are out on the pool in Still Game at 10 here on 2.